We are super excited about the Word of God this morning, and I just believe that God will bless you as a result of you carving out the time to spend in His presence and in His Word. You know, this is so important that we immerse ourselves in the Word, that we just dive in and really stay in a place of keeping our tank full and any, even in a place of overflow so that as a result of the things that the world and the cares of the world system won't cipher out what God has for us. So let's just begin this morning with a word of prayer. Father, we just thank you for those who in authority over us. We pray for our president, President Biden, Vice President Harris. We pray for governors of every state, mayors of every city. We lift up to you those who are in authority, Lord. We declare, come thy kingdom, be done thy will on earth as it is in heaven. And Lord, we thank you that you have the heart of the king. You said in your word, the heart of the president in your hand to turn it, to do your will in the earth. We declare that blessed is our nation because you are Lord over these United States of America. So we pray for every person watching. We pray the blessing be upon them. Maybe if they're at work or they're preparing to go to bed, whatever they're doing, Father, we just thank you right now that they are blessed and the commanded blessing abides in, on, and upon them right now in Jesus' mighty name. And so, Father, we thank you every member, every partner. We thank you for the soteria protection. And Father, we declare, come thy kingdom and that we believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And it's in Jesus' mighty name that we pray. Will you agree with me by saying amen? Well, we started a series on last week and we talked about male and female blessings. And so what I want to do is just pick up from where we left off last week. And I really wanted to establish the fact and get rid of some of the erroneous interpretations and ideas about domination and to really understand that God has leveled the playing field and that as a result, you know, we are in this together as Believers, we are uh, bearers of his image, bearers of his likeness, and that we, the body of Christ, have every right to experience the blessing over our lives. And so what we want to do is want to pick up where we kind of left off in Genesis last time, and we want to look at verse 28. So if you would, turn with me in your Bibles, and we're going to really get into these five blessings that God commanded upon mankind. And so I want you to understand that you are blessed this morning and that there have been five blessings that were spoken in the uh, creation over your life. And even as a result of the New Testament that we are walking in this new dispensation of grace, that same blessing is flowing up in and upon you. And so God blessed mankind. God blessed the female. God blessed the male and said, be fruitful multiply. He says, replenish the earth, subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air. And so what we want to do is really focus in this morning on being fruitful, because that was one of the things that God spoke over mankind, was the fact that he said, according to his word, to be fruitful. And how many of you know when the word is spoken over mankind, when the word is spoken over our life, we have to receive it. We have to believe it. And five is a number of grace. So I pray this morning that you really get a hold of that grace to operate in the blessings of God so that it doesn't matter how people see you. It doesn't matter if someone's trying to strategize against you or someone has a plan to try to stop you. You know what? You are blessed and the blessing will outrun, outlast, and outdo anything that anyone could try to do against you and uh, attack your life. And so it was in Adam and Eve. And as a result of the blessing, we know that the enemy came in and the enemy came in to try to block the blessing that was on their life. They opened the door up to the enemy. They disobeyed what God spoke. And as a result, the Bible says that domination came into being. And 
we know that domination is still existing today where there's a spirit of superiority and uh, mankind is trying to uh, rule over one another in relationships and at work and in communities and not allowing certain communities to allow certain people to live there and be there and wanting to dominate who gets to live where, who gets to go to school here, who gets to, you know, uh, participate in this privilege or this benefit. But you know what? Thank God for Jesus. Thank God that the field has been leveled and Jesus leveled our playing field. So now, as a result of him coming, we all have the opportunity to experience God's best for our life. Amen? So let's look at this word fruitful. I want you to see the definition that we have. And I want you to just kind of follow along with me because I want you to be very clear. I want you to have clarity concerning what fruitful means and how it was used in the context of Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. And so let's look at this here. The word fruitful means to make fruit. It means to branch off, to flourish, to increase, to grow, be productive, and bring forth. And so when God made mankind, when God spoke over man, the thing that he said concerning man was that mankind would be made after his likeness and after his image. So in essence, mankind is a branch off from God, is a spinoff, a derivative, I guess will be synonyms to what we're talking about here today. When we talk about being fruitful, we're talking about the fact that we are a branch off from God. The Bible says that he's made man a little lower than himself. And he says, what is mankind that you're so mindful of him and that you've crowned him, referring to mankind, with glory and honor, male and female who've been crowned with glory and with honor. And so that blessing, that ability to be fruitful is very evident in your life today. And so I speak it over your life and the word of already spoken over your life that you are fruitful. Let's look at a couple people who were fruitful according to the word of God. In Exodus chapter one, verse seven, um, we can see that same blessing that was spoken over mankind in Genesis one, that the children of Israel uh, experienced that same fruitfulness. So it says, uh, and the children of Israel were what? Fruitful. The children of Israel were fruitful. You know why? Because God spoke that blessing of being fruitful in Genesis 1 verse 28. And increased abundantly and multiplied and waxed exceeding mighty and the land was filled Think of that. The land was filled with them, and they experienced that blessing that God spoke out of his mouth, and that same blessing that is available for you and for me. Look at Joseph in Genesis chapter 49. That same blessing that started out in chapter 1 flowed right down to Joseph's life. And I want you to see that as it flowed through those of the Old Testament, the old patriarchs, that same ability is over your life today. Verse 23, excuse me, verse 22, it said, Joseph is a fruitful bow, even a fruitful bow by a well whose branches run over a wall. And so Joseph is believed to be the lineage by which Jesus came into the earth. The root of Jesse, and he was, you know, um, the, the, the lineage by which Jesus was born, and Jesus was a branch off of that whole um, uh, genealogy. And so Joseph was blessed, and Joseph was fruitful. Turn over to Psalms 128, verse 3. We saw the children of Israel. We saw what we just read, how Joseph was fruitful. He even talks about how wives can be fruitful. And you may say, well, 
How can a wife be fruitful? I'm telling you, you spend enough time in the word and see yourself in the word and begin to allow the word of God to abide on the inside of you, that same fruitfulness will begin to flow out upon a wife. Verse 3 says, Thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine by the sides of thine house. Thy children, like olive plants, round about thy table. So I thank God for that. Because as we talked about last time, that that blessing is both for the male and the female. Those five blessings and that first one that we're looking at this morning, to be fruitful is no respecter of gender, no respecter of person. That same blessing to be fruitful will be upon the husband, and that same ability to be fruitful will be upon the wife. And then it says it'll also flow upon the children so that the whole family is in the position of increasing, multiplying, and carrying out the plan and the purpose of God. Now, look with me over in the New Testament, because he also establishes that same uh, commanded blessing that we see in the old. We now have the opportunity to see it in the new. So it didn't stop when Jesus died. It didn't stop when Adam and Eve committed sin. It didn't stop when, you know, David disobeyed. It continued to operate. That same blessing that we see here is described. And it is operable for us to lay hold and get a hold of. Uh, Colossians chapter 1. I love what it says here in verse 10. He says uh, that you, referring to you, child of God, that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Look at what it says here in the Amplified, that you walk that you may walk, live, and conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the Lord. Now, we're not talking about, you know, putting emphasis on our efforts, putting emphasis on ourselves, on our flesh, but we're talking about as a result of what Jesus came to do and him living on the inside of us, it causes this union to bring forth fruit. We're not talking about you know, um, having to do uh, things that cause us to get into a place of strife and, and uh, self-effort. But we're talking about understanding that as a result of what Jesus came to provide, him being the ransom, we now can walk, live, conduct ourselves in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, desiring to please him in all things, bearing fruit in every good work and steadily growing and increasing in and by the knowledge of God with fuller, deeper, clearer insight, acquaintance and recognition. So we're steadily growing. I'm telling you that ability to be fruitful, got on the children of Israel. Man, there were babies just popping out left and right. They were procreating. They were multiplying. They were growing at a uh, rapid rate and increasing by the knowledge of what God had spoken over them. And so that same ability is upon our lives. Now, let's continue to go forward here and look at some things uh, look over at Jeremiah chapter 17, uh, verse 7 and 8. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 7 and verse 8. Because I want you to uh, recognize what God commanded on Adam and Eve. That first blessing is a thread that runs throughout the Bible. It didn't just stop in Genesis, but it is still very much alive in our lives. Okay, so it says, most blessed 
is the man who believes in, trusts in, and relies on the Lord, and whose hope and confidence the Lord is. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters that spread out its roots by the river. And it shall not see and fear when heat comes. No room for fear, no room to worry, but its leaf shall be green. It shall not be anxious and full of care in the year of drought, nor shall it cease yielding fruit. You know why? Because the root is green. You know, when that root is green, it'll continue to bloom. It'll continue to blossom. It'll continue to bear fruit. He says that we will never to cease yielding fruit. And I declare that over your life. You will not cease yielding fruit in your life. Glory be to God, because that blessing never ends. And so look at Psalms 1, verse 3. Psalms 1, verse 3. And let's look at this in the King James Version. These are familiar, but you know what? We're reminding ourselves of what God's word and what God has spoken over us. He says, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit. Bringeth forth fruit in his season. You know what, child of God? You've got a season. You have a season that God wants to bear fruit, that you are to bear fruit. And you know what that season is? That season is now. It's your season. This is your moment. This is your time to bear fruit. He says that we would bring forth fruit in his season, his leaf also shall not wither, and what? Soever he doeth shall prosper. The Amplified says everything he does shall prosper and come to maturity. Think of that. So it'll not just be a little bud on the branch. It won't just be a little something, but I'm telling you, it'll come to its fullness. It'll get to the point of maturity. Why? Because the root is green. And that root has the ability of God and the life of God. And as a result, it pushes forth growth and it pushes forth maturity. And it causes that branch to bring forth fruit. Glory be to God. And you know what? It's not respective to age. It's not respective to the number of years. Look at this in Psalms 92. Look at Psalms 92 verse 14, because we have to recognize that we don't have to stop yielding fruit when we get of age. I'm telling you, because the root is in place and intact and healthy, and it'll begin to bear fruit and it'll speak for itself. Psalms 92 verse 14 says, they shall still bring forth fruit in what? old age. They shall be fat and flourishing. So I don't know how old you are watching this morning, but it really doesn't matter how old you are. If you're young or if you're old or if you're in between, if you're just getting started in the things of God, you're just getting a personal relationship with God. You know what? It's your season. It is your time to begin to bring forth fruit. And maybe you say, well, I'm getting on up here. I'm in my silver years and I'm in that place. Glory be to God. The Bible says that you will continue to bring forth fruit. And look at what it says in the New Living Translation, a New Living Translation. It talks about how we can really see uh, what God wants to do. He says, even in old age, they'll still produce fruit. I know it. I, we've got seniors around here. They know how to bring forth fruit. They have the best time and know as a result of their abiding with God and remaining connected to God, they're bringing forth fruit in old age and still producing fruit, he says. 
and they will remain vital. They are vital and green. And so we have to change our mindset and just not think, well, you know, what good can I do towards the things of God? I'm getting to a point where, you know, uh, I can't maybe do certain things or don't have the energy like I had. But you know what? It really doesn't matter because that vine that's on the inside of you, that vine is still very much able as long as you begin to release your faith for it. And that faith will cause things to happen as we remain intact and we remain attached to the vine. Now let's look at some things here uh, concerning what we mean about fruitfulness. And um, fruitfulness is the evidence of an abundant, intimate life joined with Christ. Fruitfulness is the evidence of an abundant, intimate life joined with Christ. Let's start in John chapter 15, because this scripture emphasizes the importance of an intimate life that's joined with God. We've got to be joined and connected with the vine. We've got to remain intact with him. I'm going to read some from the Passion Translation because it really, really does a great job of us understanding the importance of being fruitful. So he says here, I am the true vine. If you have the Passion Translation, you can follow along with me. I, he says, am the true vine. And my father, he describes the father in verse 15, excuse me, verse 1 of chapter 15. And my farmer who tends the vine is my father. I'll read that over again. I am a true sprouting vine, and the farmer who tends the vine is my father. He cares for the branches connected to me by lifting and propping up the fruitless branches and pruning every fruitful branch to yield a greater harvest. Now, one thing we want to establish is the fact that God is the vine and we are a branch off from the vine. And so when we talked about being fruitful early on, when we looked at the original definition of that word, being fruitful, it means to branch off. We're not, you know, separating ourselves from God. We're not disconnected from God, but we're talking about we're on the branch of the vine. He is the vine and we are the branch. And so that life that is flowing from the vine is that same life that flows into the branch. And it's that union with the branch that the branch has with the vine that establishes that oneness and that union and that unity. So as we mentioned, fruitfulness is the evidence of an abundant, intimate life joined with God. So that's our evidence is the fact that, you know, it shows through our lives because we're bearing fruit from the intimacy of our relationship with God. It's the evidence of our relationship with God that we're joined to the Father. We're joined to the vine. We're joined and as a result, we bear fruit. Let, let me make, make another point here. Fruit is a simple byproduct of abiding in Christ. 
Fruit is the simple byproduct of abiding in Christ. As a result of your relationship, of you abiding in Christ, you go, you're going to bear fruit. You're going to be productive. You're going to bring forth. You're going to grow. You're going to flourish. Amen? Look at verse 3 in the Passion Translation. Verse 3 says here of John 15, it says, um, he says, so you must remain in life union with me. He says, you must remain. You must remain. The branch is remaining in life union. I mean, the branch realizes that my life, my very source, the, 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 the um, substance of my being is a direct result of my union with the vine. He says, so you must remain in life union with me, for I remain in life union with you. Ooh, that blesses me. Remain paints a picture of effortless union with the vine. Effortless union. You know, the branch isn't just trying to, you know, hang on to the vine. No, the branch just attaches itself effortlessly and receives the life-giving force, receives the substance of growth, receives the nourishment, receives the ability to flourish, receives that ability to bear fruit. And so this gives us an imagery of this text so we can step into life union with the Father. He says, for I have stepped into life union with you. For as a branch severed from the vine will not bear fruit, so your life will be fruitless unless you live your life intimately joined to me. So fruit is the simple byproduct, as I mentioned, of abiding in Christ. And so let's go a little further here down to verse 5. I hope you're really seeing the importance of this area of being fruitful and that blessing uh, being carried out in your life. He says, and when, uh, verse 5, I am the sprouting vine. Let me see, let me go back here. Instead... Your hearts are filled with sadness because, I'm in the wrong chapter, sorry. I'm kind of jumping around, getting excited here. I am the sprouting vine and you're my branches. Thank you. I am the vine, sprouting vine. He says, you're my branches. Which goes back to what we said. Genesis 1, 26, 28. Branch off, be fruitful. You're my branches, we're his branches, as you live in union with me as your source. As you live in union with the Father, as your source, fruitfulness will stream from within you. You have that life-giving ability because you are connected to the source. You're in union with the source. You live in union with the source. You're not just attached every now and then. You're not, you know, when it's good or good days, you're in union with the source. No, he says you got to live. Live in union with me as your source. Fruitfulness will stream from you. But he says when you live separated from me, you are powerless. And you know what? That's when we get in trouble when we disconnect and we think that we don't have to be in union, in life union with the Father. And you know what? The power source is disconnected from our lives. That source is disconnected from our lives. Let's go a little further here. Okay. 
If we abide in him, fruit is natural. If we abide in him, fruit is natural. It's a byproduct of the union, of us remaining. God's desire is that we would have a very fruitful life that flows directly from our union with Christ. God's desire is that you would have a very fruitful life that flows directly from your union with Christ. Now let's go a little further here. Uh, let's go to the next verse from the Passion Translation. He says, um, if a person is separated from me, he is discarded. Such branches are gathered up and thrown into the fire to be burned. And then he says, um, here in verse 8, let's skip down to verse 8. Well, you can go back to seven. Let's see what that says. But if you live in union with me and my words live powerfully within you, then you can ask whatever you desire and it will be done. So there it is again, the importance of us living, as it says in verse seven. Go back to verse seven. Living in life union with the Father. And his words living powerfully within us. And so you have to ask yourself, once we allow the word of God to remain on the inside of us, it produces a new way of thinking. It changes the way we think. We'll no longer see ourselves as unfruitful, unproductive, We'll no longer see ourselves as unsuccessful with inabilities because we have changed our mindset and we have a life union with the Father. And his words live powerfully within us. And you know what? We will ask what we will and what the Father wills because of the life connection that we have with the Father. So it is remaining in the word that produces a new way of thinking, a new level of desires, when we abide, we cannot help but ask God for the things that align with his will. That align with his will. Now let's go a little further here. Let's go to the next verse. When your life, when your lives bear abundant fruit, you demonstrate that you are my mature disciples who glorify my father. So our lives are to bear abundant fruit. And as a result, our lives bearing abundant fruit, we're demonstrating that we are connected with the Father and that we are mature. And that word that is in the Father is on the inside of us. And that word that is on the inside of us is coming from the Father. And then as a result, it glorifies him. So fruit, as I mentioned earlier, is the evidence of an abundant life joined with Christ, which brings great glory to his name. When our lives are in the place of connection by the intimacy of a personal relationship, it brings glory to his name. Now, let me make a couple of points here. Let's look at Luke's gospel, chapter 8, verse 15. Because most people want the results. They want to be fruitful, but you have to develop the root in order to have the fruit. Look at what it says in Luke 8. 15, but that on good ground are they which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, that attachment to the vine, that hearing of the word, that remaining with the word, having heard the word, keep it. 
So not just hearing it alone, but keeping it, guarding it. That was the very thing that God told Adam. And he said to guard the garden, keep out all the intruders, set up parameters, set up boundaries to keep the enemy from coming in. And so the enemy wants to come in, but you know what? We have to keep the word so that he cannot take the word from us. He cannot prevent the word from bearing fruit in our lives. But he says, when we receive the word, when the word has that system in which it is received, which is a system of having good ground, a good heart, and as a result, it'll bring forth fruit with patience. Most people want the visible results of fruit, but they don't want to develop the root system necessary to produce and sustain fruit. So you got to establish a root system for it to go into the ground and for it to be received, for the seed to be kept, and as a result, it'll bring forth fruit. They want the benefits wanting to experience the benefits of the word in their lives, but don't want to grow their roots by spending time with the Father. You develop roots by spending time with God, by allowing his word to find its place into your heart, finding its place into your spirit, allowing it to cause itself to develop roots in your life. And so these are things that come as a result of the Holy Spirit. And so we must understand is the fruit is not produced by the believer, but it is produced by the Holy Spirit. As we live in union with the Father, our part is to yield and to trust that branch is not to, you know, try to make the fruit come out. Our part is to yield to the vine. Yield to the source. Yield to the life union force that we're receiving. And then as a result, the Holy Spirit and God's part is to produce the fruit in our lives. Well, we are out of time. I pray that you receive that Genesis blessing that started in chapter 1 and verse 28 because these are the times where the children of God must stay attached and must realize their source. So, you know, it begins by a personal relationship with him and maybe you've not established that foundational decision in your life. And so we have to make a decision and just recognize that we've got to get another system. We've got to uproot the world's thinking, the cares of the world, the world's way of doing things, the world as our source, all these other things as our source and get the source that God wants us to have. And so if you've not made Jesus as the Lord of your life, say this prayer with me. Say, Heavenly Father, I believe that you are true. Come into my life. Be real in my life. I desire a personal relationship with you. I ask that you change my heart, change my mind. I ask you change my desires. And as a result, I want to live a new life. In Jesus' name, amen. So if you prayed that prayer today and you know that you receive Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, I'm telling you the heavens are rejoicing. We are rejoicing with you. The Bible says that heaven is throwing a party over one who makes a decision to come into the kingdom of God. And so we celebrate you. Get in the comments and just say, I've got saved. Those who are there, just say, welcome to the family of God. And then we want to send you something. All you have to do is send us your name and your email address. And we want to bless you with an e-book as our gift today to just let you know some things concerning this life that God is calling you to live. And so you can be productive and fruitful and successful in your personal walk with the Lord. And before you go, we want to give you the opportunity to sow 
to plant seed in the ground. And this seed that you sow has the ability to bring forth and to yield fruit like never before. Because we are sowing out of love. We are sowing knowing where the source of our life is found. It is in the vine. And as we hear the instructions from the vine on what to give during this time, we will obey. So we just thank you in advance for sowing into good ground, getting that system in place so that God can cause you to experience his best and you can bring glory to his name as a result of the seeds that you sow. Ending the curse of poverty and annihilating lack and sufficiency and having to be the tail and having to borrow. I'm telling you, those days can be over once you decide that I'm going to connect and I'm going to remain and abide in the vine. And so you can give four ways. You can text it in, World Changers, plus the amount to 74483. You can call the number 1-866-477-7683. You can mail it in at 2500 Burdett Road, College Park, Georgia, 30349. Or you could go to the website and give that way. However the Lord is leading you, we just want you to experience his best and experience him as being Jehovah Jireh, El Shaddai, the many-breasted one, the all-sufficient one, and you experience his provision, seeing it in your life. Thank you so much. Pray that you were blessed. God bless you. We look forward to seeing you again soon.